So what we're talking about today is inner versus outer and comfort versus discomfort. And even to some degree, intellectual versus emotional. And I think the big key here is this sense that, hmm, I'm going to sort of assert that predominantly speaking, when I was raised, it was sort of more like show up and do as opposed to feel. I didn't get any of that like radical, your feelings don't matter kind of stuff. Um, but I didn't particularly think my feelings mattered either. <laughs> It was sort of like, there they are, you know, it's not like they're the biggest thing happening in the universe and nobody actually told me that they didn't matter. But um, I was raised by probably practical and somewhat dogmatic and intellectual people who were sort of like do good as in rule followers, right? So I just learned there's a script somewhere, I don't know where it is exactly, of how to act and what to do, whether it's to be a good person or to do the right thing. And if you follow that, you know, tragedy is going to happen, but life is going to overall be good. And, you know, as an adult, when I had really kind of like uncontrollable emotions and difficult times where my emotions were things that I didn't understand, I didn't know how to follow, and I didn't really, like I couldn't discern their meaning, that was difficult for me, right? Um, I sought help. I wasn't necessarily in therapy for years, and I'm not the kind of person who's interested, nor do I think it's effective to sit in front of another person and have them consistently counsel me over a long, long, long period of time. Months, yes, maybe even a year or two, fine. But over a lifetime, that seems like I'm consistently seeking the counsel of someone outside of me who can't help me necessarily find the right answers for me around what's going on inside me. Um, I'm looking for tools to effectively create an environment where I'm capable of discerning how to respond to what's happening both inside and around me. And there are so many tools out there. So, um, and I feel the same way about coaching as a life coach. I don't necessarily think someone should be like a client of mine for a super long time, intermittently fine. Um, but here's the thing, now um, there's just so much, God, and I think what prompted this topic was just that there's so much going on where it's all about how people feel, and that disturbs me. Um, and it disturbs me because it's such an unknown and gray area where people feel so differently. And if you have a group, of, if you're surrounded by a group of people like I am that think very differently about things, it's a little scary to kind of sit back and watch it all come down and be like, God, um, I'm so glad that I don't have to take sides. I'm so glad that I don't have to choose this or that or him or her or up or down or black or white or whatever it is. And I can feel and see my way through the things that are happening and these adversarial positions. Because the truth is, is that I'm living according to something that's very um, neutral and very guided and very intrinsic. And so sometimes I feel very aligned over here. And sometimes I feel very aligned over there. And for me, neither of those things is correct, right, or true, right? It's like a like as you're moving through the world, right? You're never always heading true north. You're kind of over here, west, south. You know, I'm doing the directional thing wrong. But I think you get my meaning. There is no such thing. For me, as I choose one direction and then I follow that for the rest of my life and it gives everything else meaning because I am intuitive and I am spiritual and I am based in things that are... Um, organic, which means they're constantly transforming and, and changing, including my mind, my thoughts, my feelings. So I can't, you know, lay a foundation or put a stake in how I feel today, because it might be very different tomorrow. And I'm not just talking about when I say how I feel emotions, I'm talking about my opinions about things, um, switching points of view. Like seven years ago, I love living in Brooklyn. A year ago, I couldn't wait to get out. 15 years ago, I never thought I'd leave the Bay Area. Now I wouldn't go back, right? Having nothing to do with those places and whether they're good or bad, it's just that life changes and I'm changing. And, you know, there are things I want to change for sure. And then there's things where I'm like, you know, uh, we're pushing and pressing for things to change in a radical way that doesn't make sense because it's just too based in emotionalism. And, you know, that emotionalism is going to change. Um, I don't know what it's going to change into. I'm not an expert and I'm certainly not God, but it's interesting too, because it just is like having these conversations with people about like some pretty strong feelings they're having. And, you know, um, regardless of the fact that they may not be based in anything substantial to me, everyone's having them anyway. And I think that's great, right? It's just a matter of what do we do with them and what guides my feelings and what guides my decisions ultimately that affect my life 
and the lives of people around me. So I think that's all I got for today. Thanks for spending time with me. Have a great day.